Hi there, it's Matthew from PanicAttackRecovery.com. Thank you for joining me for a podcast. Today I'd like to ask you a question. Do you ever talk to yourself? Do you think you're crazy if you talk to yourself? I remember years ago uh, taking a psychology class and a student spoke up and said, I talk to myself when I'm trying to help myself solve problems. And a lot of people were surprised by this, thinking, you know, if you're talking to yourself, it must be a sign of psychopathology of some sort. But, but no, it wasn't meant to be a delusional uh, thing, but simply that this person found it useful to talk to herself, um, planning things. And a couple of other people spoke up and said they did the same thing. And just to be clear, this was not someone who was introverted by any stretch of the imagination. It was someone who was bright, intelligent, but just simply indicating that it was a helpful process to them. Well, there's an interesting article that I read in the um, Daily Express uh, from the UK, and what they're reporting on is what some researchers have found. Methodology used by these researchers is they they gave um, a set of people a set of written instructions, and they asked them to read either silently or out loud before measuring their concentration and performance. Dr. Paloma Maribefa at Bangor University, a senior lecturer in neuropsychology and cognitive psychology, said, Our results demonstrated that even if we talk to ourselves to gain control during challenging tasks, performance substantially improves when we do it out loud. So how does this all come back to you? Whenever you are stressed or anxious or in the midst of a panic attack, you have an inner dialogue that is perhaps scattered all over the place. You have racing thoughts. The inner dialogue needs to be taken and made external. So talk to yourself out loud. What you'll find is that it helps you compose your thoughts more clearly, more logically, and it can actually calm you down and help you solve problems. Or think of another example. Think of when you're writing an article or you're writing something. Even if you're writing a letter to a friend, composing an email, try reading it out loud next time, and you'll often catch things that you might not have noticed. You don't think about how it sounds to the other person. You just think about how it presents, you know, visually to you and how you process it visually by reading it. And yes, you're reading it in your head, but if you externalize that, it can often be helpful and improve your writing so that you communicate better because it helps you organize your thoughts more clearly in a way that conveys your message better. And you can do this with your emotions, with your self-talk, with your inner dialogue. And I think you really have to give this a try and do it in a way that doesn't embarrass you. If you have noticed, as I'm sure you have, most people are walking around now with earbuds, AirPods, headsets on, talking away. You don't know if they're talking to you or talking to someone else. So it's quite commonplace. I'm sure you could figure out a creative way if you're concerned about this. However, you could easily do this in private as well. I would like to encourage you to visit my website and consider a couple of different media that I'm communicating through now. I use Twitter, so on my homepage you'll see Twitter. You can sign up and follow us at Panic Attack Recovery on Twitter. That's one option. Follow our YouTube channel, Panic Attack Recovery, because we put out a lot of new videos on a fairly regular basis. What we try to do is we try to put out information sometimes a little differently in in each of our media so that we can reach people. through different examples, through different uh, information that is more effective. So if you go to my homepage, it's very simple. It's www.panicattackrecovery.com. You go to the homepage, you'll see on the homepage a place where you can click to follow us on Twitter. Uh, You'll also see a link where you can go to our YouTube channel and subscription box where you can put your email address in and sign up for my free newsletter, my Panic Attack Recovery newsletter. What you're going to find is that You put your email in the box and you'll get an email sent to you at the email address that you used when you signed up. You'll have to click on the link in order to sign up. If you don't do that, you won't get any uh, emails from us because that's considered spamming now under most jurisdictions, laws, and regulations. So we will not be able to send emails to you if you do not confirm your subscription to our newsletter. So again, go to our website at panicattackrecovery.com, sign up for our, our free and continuous email newsletter, and follow us on Twitter and go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to us on YouTube, and that way you can be assured that you will not miss out on any of the different publications that we put out there in different media, and we'll keep you up to date on the latest and greatest strategies that you can use for panic attack recovery. Thank you very much for listening to this podcast, and please 
Stay tuned for more podcasts. All information presented in these podcasts is provided for educational and informational purposes only. It is not intended to be a substitute for a psychologist, psychiatrist, or other health care provider's consultation. Please consult a psychologist, psychiatrist, or appropriate health care provider about the applicability of any opinions or recommendations with respect to your own panic attacks, anxiety or agoraphobia, or any other symptom or condition.